the radio program that brings you authentic facts on criminal case histories. Sloan Cinnamon presents Gangbusters. Official facts on the Broadway and Coney Island murder. Speaking of murderous careers, are you working part-time for the Axis? No, of course not, and don't be indignant. I merely wanted to make my point. Maybe your back or your arm is working for the Axis without you knowing it. You see, if you have an aching back, a stiff neck, or a sore arm as a result of overexertion, strain, or fatigue, and you don't do anything about it fast enough, you're losing valuable time and effort and playing right into the hands of the enemy. The quickest and most effective relief for muscular aches and pains is Sloan's Liniment. Because Sloan's is the easy pat-on liniment that works just like a heat treatment without any painful rubbing or massage. You see, the actual pain of muscular distress is caused by blood congestion. But when you pat on Sloan's Liniment, a soothing, concentrated warmth quickly penetrates to the affected spot, breaks up that congestion and helps permit the blood to circulate freely again. Your arm feels almost like new, and so do you. So next time muscular distress attacks and you need help in a hurry, get Sloan's Liniment. And now, gangbusters in the case of the unknown killer. Picture our setting as a special office turned over to gangbusters by Commissioner Louis J. Valentine of the New York City Police for a proxy interview between Colonel H. Norman Schwarzkopf, United States Army, and Inspector Charles N. Stilson, New York City Police, retired. Thank you, Charles Stark. Inspector Stilson, tonight's case is one of the strangest in many years. Uh, yes, Colonel Schwarzkopf. For the police were not only dealing with cold-blooded murder, but a gang leader whose identity was unknown even in the underworld. Where does tonight's case begin, Inspector Stilson? Well, Colonel Schwarzkopf... It was ten minutes after midnight of April the 16th, 1939. A man sat before a battered roll-top desk in a dimly lit office on a side street off Broadway, New York City. He was busily stuffing rolls of bills into a black leather briefcase. Suddenly, the telephone rang. Yeah, who is it? Is that you, Mercurio? Who is it? Mean to say you don't recognize my voice? Who are you trying to kid? Oh, it's you. Where are you? I mean, uh, in town, where are you? Never mind where I am. I want to see you, Mercurio. No, wait a minute. You, you got me wrong. Did I say anything? I just said I'm going to pay you a little visit, say, in about 20 minutes. Oh, wait. Let me explain. You got it all wrong. Have I? Still kidding yourself, huh? I'm coming up to your office, Mercurio, and I'm putting daylight into your brain. Hello? 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 Get away from this money. The briefcase. in my way, Mercurio? You? What? I, I thought you said 20 minutes. I... Just my little joke. I was calling from the phone booth next door. Listen, let's talk this over. Can't we talk it over? The gun's in my overcoat pocket. Shall we turn up this alley? Alley? Get going. Please, you've got to believe me. I wasn't holding out your share of the door. Honestly, I was A nice little alley to walk in, isn't it? Look, the door's in this briefcase. You can have all of it, every cent. Big-hearted guy all of a sudden. Yeah, take the briefcase. Now we're square, pal. We, we're square. That's right, Mercurio. All but this. <laughs> okay, now, Gonzalez, we can talk in this compartment. What do you want to know? Well, he's this way, Kappa. This guy what sent you to Chicago to get me. He's a big shot, ain't he? Figures they come. 
How come he sent for me? Well, you see, Gonzalez, the guy whose job you're taking double-crossed him. So there's an open spot in his mouth. Oh. You see, the boss keeps his ear to the ground. He hears that you're doing a good job in Chicago, so he sends for you. What kind of guy this boss is, Kappa? I don't know too much about him myself, Gonzalez. Huh? You're his head man, ain't you? Yeah, sure. But I don't pay to get curious. How with this guy? Where are we going to meet in New York? His office or headquarters? Boss don't have no headquarters. Like that, people he don't want to see can't pay surprise visits. Mm, that's a good idea. Yeah. He does all his business on crowded subway stations. So that's where we're going to meet him. I've been down in New York subway. Yeah? Yeah. Well, this is the busiest subway station in the world, Gonzalez. Times Square. Hey, where do you suppose all these papers are going, huh? Kids. Come on, we'll walk down to this end of the station where it's less nice, huh? We gotta wait along? You can answer that as well as me. Well, I know we were told to wait. Hello, Captain. <laughs> Boss, I, I didn't see you back at that post. And you're Gonzalez. That's right. Glad to know you. I've heard some good things from Chicago about you, Gonzalez. Handy with a rod, they tell me. Yeah, both hands. Good. I'll try that handy yard tonight on the payroll job. Captain, yes. get a car and we'll meet at the usual place near Coney Island at 8 o'clock. All right, boss. Okay, now separate and I'll see you tonight. That's the movie house over there by the boardwalk. Now, you got your part straight, Capper? Yeah, yeah, sure, killer. I stay in the car and be ready for the getaway. How about you, Gonzalez? Very right, sure. When the manager comes out with the money, I... Uh, uh, massage him with the bullet. For the last time, I'm telling you that I'll handle the manager. You take care of the cop who'll be with him. Well, I figure I handle both of them. You do what you told. The boss, they're coming out of the movie now. Okay, Gonzalez, get out of the car. Capper... Be ready for a fast getaway. I'll be ready. Come on, Gonzalez. Keep your gun out of sight till we're on top of it. Have a boss. Okay, now. A few more steps. Just look at that cop. He thinks he... Now, kill him. Help! Hold up! Help! We've got no time to waste on you, mister. I got the money. Hey, wait, the cop ain't dead yet. Now he is. Here comes the car. Come on, boss. Up in. Nice job. Shut up. Get going. Come on, get going. I'm a photographer. You know, I take pictures. Movies? Well, sort of. You know, you're moving along the sidewalk, and I snap your picture. Then you send me two bits, and you get the real art job. You know. I see. And now, about the information you have. Yeah, well, uh, on this night when the two rods burned down the copper, uh, I mean the policeman, I'm working Fifth Avenue across from the movie house. Then you see? saw the hold-up? Well, no, not exactly, Cap. See, I'm busy pursuing my profession. I'm taking a close-up of a slick chick that's anchoring down the avenue, and then the fireworks start. Oh. Uh, later, though, I develops the picture, and I take one look, and I figure that's the McCoy. Here, take a gander at this. Yeah, that's very nice, but... Hey, what's that in the background? 
That's why I said it's the McCoy. See, there's a guy sitting in a car. As soon as the shooting starts, he gets underway and he picks up them two stick-ups. Good work, Siggy. Sergeant, come here. Yes, sir. Now, Sergeant, take this photograph down to identification. Have them make a blow-up of the face of that man in the car. See if anybody can identify him. Yes, sir. Siggy, I want you to know that we're grateful for your cooperation. Oh, I think nothing of it, Cap. It's all part of a day's work. She sure was a slick chick, wasn't she, huh? <laughs> Ain't often I get a dame what's so, uh... Captain. Captain Dennison's office. Sergeant Hurley, sir. I'm down at identification now. We've identified the man in the car. Excellent, Sergeant. Who is he? A gunman named Kappa. We've had him in on several homicides, but he's been able to wriggle out of them. Served time for assault some years back. Have Kappa picked up immediately, Sergeant. I'll get the men on it right away, Captain. We know Kappa's usual hangouts should only take a couple of hours. All right, get going. You say that fellow Kappa spends a lot of time here in your pool room, Bonnie. Oh, yes, sir, Sergeant. He, he's a nice boy, too. He, you know, he's uh, never no trouble. Oh. Yeah. Hey, what's he do for a living? Working? Work, eh? <laughs> Why? When he's so lucky with the dice, so I work, eh? What makes you think he's lucky? Why, uh, on the other day, he come to me, uh, I got a chance of $120 in a silver to build. <laughs> I shouldn't be so lucky. Oh, here he comes now. Hello, Captain. Hello, Mr. Hello. Just a minute, Captain. How are you? Sergeant Hurley, police department. Uh, what do you want from me? I ain't done nothing. Sure, sure. That's just what I tell him, Captain. He's all right. Sir. We'd just like to have you drop down to headquarters for a little talk. Oh, they don't want to come. Well, I think I can persuade you. Okay, I got nothing to worry about. Uh, no. Keep that corner table empty, Mr. Penny. I'll be sure. back in a half an hour. All right, all right. Come on, Captain. Captain's anxious to get the answers to those questions. <laughs> It's a penny you think's them a quiz program. Oh, <laughs> yes, you think it's a quiz. It's funny. <laughs> Personally, I prefer crooners, Captain. I kind of think you're going to croon plenty. All right, Captain. It's no use calling around anymore. You're going to tell us who the two other men were who killed Patrolman Fox. Oh, the love of my Captain. Ain't you been listening to me? I tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. Stand up when you talk to Captain. Okay. All right now, Captain. Who are the two men you picked up in that car after the shooting? I tell you, I didn't pick up no one. I was just driving along. Just driving along, huh? Just drive. Who told you to stand up? Uh, he did the start. Well, sit down and hurry up about it. Okay, okay. What were you doing driving along Surf Avenue? Just driving along, I tell you. So that's all you got to say for yourself, just driving, huh? Okay, Kappa, put your hat on. We're going up to the DA's office. Well, it's okay with me. Be better than all these questions you guys... Take that hat off. The sergeant just told me to and put it... And who told you to stand up? Didn't I say sit down? Yeah, sure. Well, sit down. Hey, you guys ought to make up your mind. Who are the men in that car with you? I tell you, there were no guys in the car with what me. What are you waiting for? I said to come along with me. Holy smoke, what are you guys trying to do? Stand up when you talk to the sergeant. Well, you just told me not to... that I told you. What are you going to tell us about the two other men in the killing? Oh, give me a break, will you? I, I, I can't think straight. First, you tell me to stand up, sit down. He, he tells me to put on my head. head off. I didn't mean nothing, Captain. I was just showing you. You never gave Fox a break, Kappa. You drove the murder car, Kappa. No, I'm not telling you. You I said didn't... before you did drive the car. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I mean, it I... It might go easy on if you'd cooperate. Stand on your feet when the captain's talking to you. I don't know nothing. I tell you, I wasn't near the movie that night. You said you were driving along Surf Avenue, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, that's right by the movie, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Show him that photograph, Sergeant. There you are, my friend. See what's directly behind you? The movie house where the killing took place. I'm being framed, I tell you. Get back in that chair. Oh, I'll let up, will you? Where'd you get $120 in silver the day after the holdup? In a crap game, I tell you. You're lying, Kappa. Who's in this with you? Nobody. I ain't in you it. You fired the first shot. I didn't. Gonzalez. Gonzalez. He says you Are did. you going to let him pin it on you? Who is Gonzalez? I don't know any Gonzalez. You just said you did. Stand up on your feet. Okay, okay. Gonzalez wouldn't front for you like this. Let me think, will you? What are you standing up for? I'll lay off, this will you? your last chance, Kappa. Where's Gonzalez? Tell us about Gonzalez. Come on. Okay, okay. Okay, I'll tell you only let up on me. He's a... He's at the Alvin Hotel, room 704. Now, will you leave me alone? Who's the other one? I won't tell you. I don't know nothing. You can't make me say no more. All right, Sergeant. Take him away. We're going over to that hotel and pay a call on this fellow Gonzalez. Front, boy. Yeah, Mr. Crane. Take this luggage up to room 501. All this stuff for one guy? He must be the four Hawaiians. Never mind the wisecracks. Take the stuff up. Honest, Mr. Crane, I can't. My back's so sore, I just can't lift anything. Didn't you pat that Sloan's liniment on? Well, gee, I meant to, Mr. Crane, but a couple of boys came up. You go to the drugstore and get some Sloan's liniment. 
I, I just pat it on, huh? Not rub it. Right, just pat Sloan's on. It'll work like a heat treatment. Gee, thanks, Mr. Crane. Hey, wasn't that Captain Dennison just went up the elevator with that police sergeant? Never mind that. You go get that Sloan's liniment and pat it on quick. Yep. And get back here fast so you can get to work. Here's the hotel room, Captain 704. All right. You know how to handle it, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Have you gun ready? There's no telling what we may walk into. Maybe Gonzalez not in. Yeah. Telegram for you, Mr. Gonzalez. Telegram? Oh, okay. Shove it under the door. It's collect. Sixty-three cents I gotta get. Okay. Wait a second. Okay, well, let's have... Hey, so what is this? This is a police special 38 caliber. I wouldn't try to reach that artillery in your shoulder harness if I were you. I'll take that gun, Gonzalez. Got a permit for it? Who are you guys? I'm Captain Dennison. This is Sergeant Hurley. We're arresting you for carrying a gun without a permit. And if it happens that the bullets in that gun match the bullets that killed Patrolman Fox, it's murder. I'm being framed. What brought you here? A pal of you is named Tepper. Remember him? He told us where we'd find you. Kappa. Sorry, you rat. You should have stayed in Chicago. Want to talk, Gonzalez, or are you going to take the rap for your pal? I don't know nothing. Who was the third man, Gonzalez? I don't know what he's talking about. Anything interesting around, Sergeant? I hear something. What do you make of it, Captain? I keep Gonzalez covered, Sergeant. Let me see. That's an ammo pad. It's like a number was written on the top sheet, then thrown off. Yes, we can see the indentation on the next sheet. I think I can make it out. Looks like okay. E Q. Equator. I can't make out the numbers. What are they, Gonzalez? It's doing swell, Kappa. All right, Gonzalez, we'll show you something. First, we'll take this piece of pencil there and blow the graphite dust over the indentations like this. We got anything of it? Equator five three. I can't quite make out the rest. Who's had that number, Gonzalez? I should tell you, my girlfriend. If you're taking me to headquarters, take me to headquarters. It looks like two, one, three. I'll try it, Captain, see what we get. Pretty anxious, Gonzalez. We're waiting right here. Huh? Whoever the third man is, he'll probably get in touch with you, and without knowing it, he's also going to get in touch with us. Well, you guys got me on a gunshot. What do you want to wait around here for? Shut up, Gonzalez. Sergeant, get that phone number to headquarters and have the men check its location. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, I'll notify the telephone company and have them put an extension phone in this room right away. Oh, I get it, sir. Yes. We're going to wait here and listen in on whoever phones our friend. So sit down, Gonzalez. Make yourself comfortable. We're here for the duration. Sit down. How about some midnight coffee, Captain? Should I phone down to the hotel clerk? Yeah, and look, Copper, make it a hamburger, too, will you? I'm hungry. Stay sitting in that chair, Gonzalez. Have the men check that phone number, Sergeant? Yes, Captain. It's a bar room. They're keeping it under watch. Uh, we'll wait in this hotel room all week, if necessary, till Gonzalez gets a call. And remember, Gonzalez, we'll be listening on the extension form. Say just what you're told and not another word. But it's two against one. What can I... Okay. Get a gun on, Gonzalez. You bet. Now, Gonzalez, lift that receiver the same time I lift this extension form. Hello? Gonzalez? Yeah. Where's Kappa? Tell him he's up here. Go on. He's up here. I told him to wait at his rooming house, didn't I? Put him on the phone. Tell him you can't. He's drunk. Go on, if you know what's good for you. He, he, he can't. He's, uh, all ginned up. What? I'm down in the lobby. I'll be right up. Quick, Sergeant. Handcuff Gonzalez and shove him in that closet. No, you don't. There you got him? There we are. Now in your door. Hey, let me out of here. It's a captain's boss. Get him off 
with that noise. Uh, better drag him out of there quickly and engage him. On the hotel manager downstairs. I'm certain that wasn't a truck. Oh. Don't move. Who are you? Shut up. Yeah, I'm already dead. What is this? Don't talk. Ed, he has a gun. Do as he says. That's smart, sister. I've already killed two guys in my life, and I'll kill you if I have to. What do you want? The cops have got me sewed up in this hotel. And you're going to hide me until the coast is clear. Do as he says, Ed. I'm frightened. You, sister, come here. Oh, what for? You're just about my size. Maybe I can squeeze into your clothes and get out of here. Take your hands off my wife. Get back or I'll pump a bullet into oh, you. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, Ed. You, you killed my husband. Get out of my way before I give you the same. Police, police. Stupid dame. on the mezzanine. We're cutting it off now. Good. How about the elevators? All cut off, Captain. All staircases are covered, and all guests have been notified not to unlock their doors. All right, Sergeant. Bring an elevator up to this floor. I'll meet you at the elevator shaft. Yes, sir. Be right up. Has he been sighted since you spoke to me, Sergeant? No, sir. Well, he must still be on the mezzanine. Now, take me down there. We've got all exits covered, sir. He can't get out. He's already killed one person in the hotel. He may kill others. Come on. We'll go over every foot of this floor ourselves. Captain, down there. Someone coming out that door. It's him. See the gun? He ran back inside. Come on. Careful, now. Maybe right around this corner. If he is, he's running into a dead end. According to the floor plan, this leads to the main ballroom. There he goes, through that door at the far end. That's the ballroom. All exits are covered. Careful. We make a good target and we can't see him. They got to love you. My arm. He winged me. I'm going in after Careful, him. Captain. He's gun crazy. There's only one way to treat a mad dog. Come on out while you're still alive. Stay back. Call your men off. You haven't got a chance. Stay back, I tell you. I'll get you like I get the rest of them. Stay back. You're finished. If you kill me, there'll be others. They'll keep coming till they get you. Come on out. You ain't taking me. You'll be running out of bullets soon. It's your last chance to give up. No. You ain't taking me. No. Captain. Captain, you all right? I'm all right, Sergeant. Now, this fellow isn't going to give us any more trouble. Captain, look who he is. Yeah. Abe Beetler, the killer. The guy we've been after for the killing of that bookie. Yeah. No one will ever know how many men Beetler really killed. Funny that his last victim should be himself. Yes, Colonel Schwarzkamp. The ambushing of Abe Beetler in a crowded New York City hotel after he had already killed an innocent man living there was one of the most tense and dangerous situations that I know of. Well, thanks to the fearless work of those police officers, Inspector Stilson, Beetler's only escape proved to be one that removed him forever as a menace to society. Thank you, Inspector Stilson, for telling these facts. And now, Gangbusters listeners, we're going to bring you urgent nationwide clues on persons who are being sought this very minute by police and federal authorities throughout the country. These nationwide clues that have played a vital part in bringing almost 300 criminals to justice so far 
are broadcast every week by gangbusters brought to you by Sloan's Liniment. For half a century, Sloan's Liniment has been helping millions of Americans handle surprise attacks of muscular distress. Here's how. You just pat Sloan's on. Almost immediately, it goes to work like a heat treatment, swiftly, comfortingly. Yes, you'll actually feel that welcome, penetrating warmth and its promise of quick and blessed relief. So don't let muscular distress get you down. Don't stand one single moment of needless suffering. Be prepared with a bottle of Sloan's liniment on your medicine shelf at home and an extra bottle handy at your job. Remember, when muscular distress attacks and you need help in a hurry, get Sloan's liniment. And now, Gangbusters Clues. Gangbusters listeners, our first clue tonight concerns a dangerous subject, Fred Williams Poole, against whom a complaint was filed before United States Commissioner, Columbia, South Carolina, charging Poole with fleeing across state lines to avoid prosecution for murder. Note this man's official description very carefully. Fred Williams Poole, many aliases, 56, 5 feet, 7 or 1 half inches, 145 pounds, brown hair, gray, blue eyes, upper and lower front teeth missing, walks with head down, walks with head down, has long criminal records and is reported to have in possession two machine guns and 45 caliber automatic pistol. Watch for Fred Williams Poole. Here is an urgent wire just received from Warden Alfred Dowd, Indiana State Prison. It concerns convict Ralph L. Williams, who escaped from Honor Prison Farm while serving a 10-year sentence for robbery. This is Williams' description. Ralph L. Williams, 26, 5 feet 10 inches, 150 pounds, Dark brown hair, blue eyes, scar left side forehead, letters L-O-V-E tattooed on four fingers, numbers 1935 and word O'Donnell on upper forearm. This man reported to have escaped Honor Prison Farm, Indiana State Prison, be on lookout for Ralph L. Williams. These are the clues on persons wanted tonight, June 9th, 1944, right this moment. If you have any information on these clues, notify your local police, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or gangbusters at once. And now the highlight facts on next week's case, Colonel Schwarzkopf. Gangbusters, friends, next week we have one of the most dramatic case histories ever presented. The Crimes of the Woman Gang Leader. It's a case of many unexpected surprises and developments. I invite you to listen. To next week's Gangbusters Factual Case History. <laughs> Gangbusters Factual Case History is a Philip H. Lord production for the makers of Sloan's Liniment. Remember, when you want help in a hurry... Get Sloan's Liniment. Mr. Stark, how do you pronounce N-O-N-S-P-I? Non-spy? I pronounce it safe from offending. Oh. Because it acts instantly, dries quickly, and keeps you bath fresh from one to three days. Good. How do medical authorities pronounce N-O-N-S-P-I? Non-spy? They pronounce it safe from skin irritation. Oh. Because so many medical authorities have found it to be non-injurious to the most delicate skin tissues when used according to direction. Wonderful. How do laboratories pronounce N-O-N-S-P-I? Non-spy? They pronounce it safe from clothes damage. Oh. Yes, the Better Fabrics Testing Bureau reports that their analysis shows no damage can be done to clothing by non-spy if user follows directions. Perfect. It's the new liquid deodorant. Comes in 35 and 60 cent sizes at all drug and department stores. Now may I ask how you pronounce N-O-N-S-P-I? 
Well, after hearing how everyone else pronounces non-spy, I pronounce it bet. This is the Blue Network. <laughs> 